So let me take you through how to use the MyCAD grab bar library and the toilet partition library. So let's start with grab bar. So I've already got the families loaded. So let me start placing a grab bar. So I'm um, going up to the component tool and the grab bar families are right there. So I'm going to start with the grab bar straight horizontal one that's 36 inches long. So I'll click on that. I'll move over here into my plan view and you can see the grab bar attached to my pointer. Hitting the space bar will allow me to rotate it and I can drop it into place and you'll notice it appear in 3D. It's got a default mounting height built into it and I can place one on the other side as well. So let me zoom in there in 3D so you can see them. So obviously you can move these around. Now one thing as you should notice these are not hosted so if you delete the host these objects will still remain. Um, we also have a uh, vertical grab bar so I'll click in here there's their vertical grab bar 24 inches. Again hitting the space bar will allow you to rotate that and move it into place and you can see it there in my 3D view. Let me erase those initial two straight ones. and go add in another one. Here's the L-shaped one. I created two different L-shaped ones. So here's the standard L-shaped. Again, spacebar to rotate. I'll move into place. There's the first L-shape option. And then the second L-shape option is L-shape 2, which returns it has a gap. So all of these grab bars have parameters. Uh, let me show you them. So with this one selected, I'll go to edit type and I'll scroll down to the lower bottom here. So for this particular one, there's a side bar and a back bar, right? So the back bar length is displayed there. The back bar gap is this distance across here. And then there's the side bar return length. So that's this distance here. So just to show you how that works, if I change that to six inches and hit apply, you can see things kick over a little bit. Right, so there's parameters for that. Also the sidebar length, so let me change that to three feet and hit apply, it's a sidebar length. And then the default mounting height, which you can change everywhere. So all the grab bars have parameters like that to uh, so you can quickly drop them into your uh, project. So let's look at the toilet partitions now. So the toilet partitions, there are two families. There is a, a door panel and a divider panel. So I'm gonna start placing those. So I'm gonna go to component, go to my drop down list and I'm going to choose the toilet partition divider panel. There's one that's already got an overhead brace and just a standard panel. So I'll start with that one. So I'll click on that. I'll move into my plan view, spacebar to rotate, and I'll just drop it in in the approximate light right location at this stage. And you can, there you can see it in the 3D view. Uh, to get it to the exact right position, simply use the dimension command. I'll dimension from the face of the wall. I'll choose the center of that uh, partition and then I can use the dimensions to move it to exactly the right location. So then if I was going to have other individual stalls beyond that all you would have to use is the copy command. So I'll just copy that over three feet and another three feet. And now I just need to place the doors in front of each of these. So I'll go back to my component tool and this is where you would use the toilet partition door panel. And you can see here we have four different types. Uh, the default one, the, the most commonly used one, is the toilet partition that is floor anchored and overhead braced. This one is floor anchored uh, without the overhead brace. Then one will be floor to ceiling and ceiling anchored. So the previews aren't showing you all the details, so I'll show you on screen. So let's start with floor anchored, overhead braced. So I'll click on that, I'll move into my screen, again, spacebar to rotate. So initially what I usually do is move it in an alignment with the wall. It doesn't detect the other object, but that'll be easy to fix afterwards. So I'll move it into an alignment here in my 3D view. You can see the floor based and overhead braced. And I'll use the align command to move it into the right spot. And then I can click on this and it has grips in here for the length of the plasters so I can use these grips to kind of stretch the length until it looks good. Uh, you can also use the parameters in here and type in whatever value you need. And you could certainly use the align command as well. So there's the, uh, the door panel and overhead brace. Now maybe this panel here should be overhead braced. You just have to swap it over to the other panel type. Um, and then I just need to do the doors in the, the other direction, so just repeat the same uh, command. And again, you just quickly throw it on the screen and then you can snap it into place afterwards if you want. So I'll click move and just shift it over there. Okay, so now it's hiding in front of that panel. And I'll just copy that over to cover the next object. So three feet is what I used before. 
and you can see your toilet panels are coming along. Now a couple things here. This obviously overlapped a little bit too far so you can click on the grips and you can stretch that into place. And uh, at this side there's an extra line there because, and you can see it here in 3D, I'm showing the hinge plaster with this as well as the, the latch side plaster with that one. So to correct this, the easiest way is to click on this particular family and we have some visibility parameters that allow you to control that off. So I can turn off the hinge or the latch plaster for any of the door panels. So I'm going to turn off the hinge one, move on to the screen and you can see that cleans the graphic up a little bit for me. So the layout is pretty simple. Uh, what about uh, urinal screen? So let me erase this wall so you'll be able to see it better. So if I want a urinal screen over here, the easiest way is just to copy one of these panels over, whatever the distance is, and I can swap that panel out to one of my urinal screen panels. So there we go. So at any time during the design, if you want to update the 3D graphics, you can just select any one of these panels and change between the four various options. So this one was the overhead raised. Here's the one that's floor anchored. So in which case I would need to just get rid of uh, that overhead raised. So that's floor anchored, ceiling anchored, and floor to ceiling. So how did all that happen? Well, behind the scenes are some parameters for those things. So when I look at the, the parameters, there are visibility controls for each of those types, floor to ceiling, overhead raised, floor anchored, or ceiling anchored. And then there are parameters here for what is the plaster height, panel thickness, the height of the panels above the floor, the actual panel height, ceiling heights, and the actual brace height. So there's a bunch of different parameters in there to allow you to control the graphics of the object. Um, also parameters to show the plaster shoes and uh, and the uh, last options in here are uh, materials, panel material and brace material. So if I go to a 3D view and turn on the colors, you will see all of that. So each one of these has a configurable uh, material parameter. So if I change that to toilet partition panel and click OK, which is just off the screen here, you'll see it update in model. So that's a look at the MyCAD toilet partition library and grab bar library. Thanks for watching.